Hi, I'm Christina. I'm Maya from, from Book Room Dreams. Dreams. And today we are bringing you a discussion video and review video of Burn For Me by Alona Andrews. Yay! <laughs> All right. Um, so, fair warning from now on, spoilers. So if yeah. you haven't read the book, I guess turn Bye. away or I don't know, read the book then come back or if you want to know what yeah. this is about and it won't bother you, then stick around and check it out. I guess. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Burn For Me was written by Alona Andrews and behind that pen name, hi, Alona Gordon and Andrew Gordon. Uh, they are a married couple who write uh, urban fantasy and um, romance books. Uh, so their works include the Kate Daniels series, which I'm also a big fan of, uh, then The Edge, The Kinsman Universe, Innkeeper Chronicles, and so on and so on. They're very prolific. So many books, so little time to read them all. <laughs> uh, so uh, Burn For Me is the first book in the Hidden Legacy series in which we follow I guess that is Nevada, and that's her love interest, Mad Rogan, uh, as they try to hunt a crazy wizard. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay, so the whole book is sort of set in uh, futuristic uh, Houston, a little bit different than ours, because the entire country is uh, being ruled uh, by uh, magical families, and uh, each magical family uh, is somewhere on the tier of magic. So if you're a prime in a magic of whatever, then you are very powerful and you've got, you know, your... It's the highest stuff. rank of like magic users. Yes. So you're yes. like... Awesome. Powerful as... Mm. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, in our book, uh, Nevada has to capture a son of a very prominent family who is also who is a uh, prime in the fire magic whose name I will not ever be able to pronounce fire or something pyrotechnic no, pyrotechnic so uh, fireworks what, what what is it Pyro... pyromancy pyromancy yes, yes I think pyromancy I think. and uh, uh, in her quest to find him she sort of hooks up with Mad Rogan who is also a prime but he is also known for his ruthless and um, let's say, violent behavior during the war yeah. with Mexico. So the two of them have to find this dude and capture him and, you know, they banter and develop a relationship. And this book is so awesome. Yeah. And I mean, uh, what I have written down here is that, that <laughs> this description and this description here and everywhere you, where you get it, and if you see the cover, it kind of looks like a very cheesy, bad romance novel, yes. but it's not. It truly, it truly is not. Mm -hmm. We read this as part of our um, quarterly favorites uh, thing we're doing. We're doing, yeah, with a couple of our friends, and one of our friends said that she was very prejudiced towards the book because of the cover, and that she was so pleasantly surprised by how good it was, mm -hmm. and. So since Maya is the only one that actually read the book before, before yes, the the rest of us, the three of us, were so like fascinated by the <laughs> book and we enjoyed it so much that all three of us are reading the second yes. book already. Yes, actually, one of us has already read it. So you know, it was really good. So don't judge. Literally, don't <laughs> judge, a book, judge a book by its cover because this is really a true case of that saying, yes. like, don't judge it, it's really good. Alright, uh, so let's talk about our characters. Yes. So Nevada Baylor is our uh, main character, she is a private investigator, so she, uh, after her father died, she uh, kept the, his uh, investigating firm alive, she works very hard, her yes. entire family is uh, involved in this operation, and uh, yes. she works very hard to keep to keep the, the the firm afloat, to keep her family safe. Yes. And she's so awesome. She's not. So she she basically, for me, I think we agreed. All of us agreed that she was like pretty badass. Mm -hmm. She she represents an independent an independent woman, both financially and emotionally. Mm -hmm. A woman who takes care of her family. Mm -hmm. She is very clear as to what her goals are, mm -hmm. what's her um, motivation in life, yes. which is to take care of her family and continue her father's legacy. Mm -hmm. 
and, and she the, doesn't let boys distract her from her. Yes, that's over one of the best things with her. Book, yes. She she has like this both emotional and sexual being in her. Mm -hmm. she, it, it, she doesn't shy away from it, but she doesn't let it overcome her life as is usually in the books, but rather she just recognizes it's there and just pushes it aside because there's a job she has to do, mm -hmm. a family to take care of, mm -hmm. and that's really actually one of her, I think, best qualities is because yes. she's very human, she realistic, she knows in the situation she's in, she knows what she has to do to solve it, mm -hmm. and she finds ways to do that. Yes, and she doesn't let, like, she has a very... Uh, a physical connection with uh, Rogan. She, they have chemistry. You can oh, definitely yes. tell the banter is is there. Uh, literally, and it's uh, so fun to watch. To, yes, to read. my 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 first reaction to the book was like best non sex sex scenes ever. Yeah, literally, there's so much chemistry. So so it's so intense. Yes, the, so the, the development of their relationship. I mean, there is of course the trope of the whole you know alpha male. Yeah. <laughs> it's like trying to whatever, um, but you know she acknowledges that there is something between them, but she's not going to pursue it because she understands that uh, Rogan is not good for her. He yeah. know she knows that um, as he is a prime, he sees other people well, not like people, I guess. She she uh, he sees her as a challenge, yes. and uh, he doesn't really see her as a person, which he has shown through the entirety of the book. So in the end, when he's like, okay, now we're going to, away together, we're going to have sex, she's like, no, we're not. You're yeah. a crazy person. And uh, that's awesome about her. And, and that was really, it was like you read the second book to see, okay, what's going to happen yeah. next now? Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's an awesome female character and I really enjoyed Yeah. Enjoyed I mean, she, she's her. brave. She, she, th this part, she understands her emotions. Yes. She refuses to get involved in, in, into something that, not because it's going to hurt her. It just, she knows what she's going to do in the situation. Yes, she knows herself. And, and she, knows. she just doesn't want to expose herself to that. Yes. Because why would you, if you know that it's not going to work, that this person is just not, not even mature enough, just not mentally stable at that point I enough think, for I you. think he doesn't know how to be he, around normal people, people. let's yeah. say. Yeah, so should we talk about Rogan? Yes, we should talk about Rogan. Yeah. So Rogan is a war hero. Uh, in this world there was a war uh, between North America and Central America and uh, he enlisted in the army when he was very young and they sort of poached him because he has this power of, I want to say, wrecking things down. He can move things uh, and he's very powerful and so they sort of trained him to be this killing machine and he didn't really get to use his power much because just the threat of him being somewhere, just the rumor of be of him being somewhere sort of calmed the entire situation. Yeah. So he was, you know, came back from the war all screwed up and, and with lots of PTSD. He, and... he has a lot of PTSD. Uh, he went into the army because he wanted a way to control his power, like not hurt. He, he, he didn't want to hurt anybody. So he wanted to find a way where it could be used without... That did not turn out well for him. That did not turn out, because obviously, no, there's a war, there's casualties, you never kind of get yes. over it. And I think it's only amplified with him because he is a prime. And we actually wrote down that one of the things uh, that was interesting in the book is how there was this whole... Uh, treatment of violence as mm -hmm. it was very as if it was very casual and it doesn't matter um who the victims are if they're yes. like uh, you know regular people do they do they deserve it <laughs> but it was just very casual and there was a lot of glorification of weapons mm -hmm. um and stuff and it, uh, it, it is used in a way in this book to sort of uh show the the those prime families those uh, magical, powerful families that they think themselves above the law and that they see people who are not as powerful as them as something to be used. So that's why yes. when they go around and just, you know, well, most of the killing, at least from 
uh, Nevada's and, and Rogan, okay, Rogan's more or less side came as self defense, but uh, yes. Rogan really didn't have any qualms about it. While Nevada, yes. when he when she killed a, a, a person, she was she yes, very was very distraught about yes, it. Yes, and she was wondering if she was turning into Rogan, basically. Yes. I mean, there's like this uh, one quote where <laughs> when they go into this part of the city, never mind, and he, Rogan literally tells to Nevada, maybe you should make me a list of people I can kill and ways in which they're allowed to die. Yes. So basically she, throughout the book, she's trying to explain morality to him mm -hmm. and some social norms and conventions, like literally teaching him you cannot kill people at will. Yes. That's not okay. You're supposed to care like what you do. You 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 should think about what your actions will cause. Yeah. And he so. is a, so he is an alpha male in that aspect and also in the whole he likes Nevada because she challenges him and she, he sees her as a challenge because she says no to him when he is trying to get with her. And so he's always like very confident in himself like you want me and you know yes. stuff like that so that's sort of a trope that always happens in these sort of books but there's also a, a different side of him uh, he takes care of his people as he says uh, so he yeah. has an organization um, uh, around him that he uses to uh, help Nevada this time and later in later books but he also uses to help other people the war uh, veterans mostly. yes he he employs war veterans most so, yes, yes most yes. all of them are war veterans and he or as he says he takes care of his people so when he hires you he takes care of your debt and your children and so on because uh, he says that if you have if you owe to someone else then you are a liability to me and you can't be a liability if you work for me so yeah. yes he's he's very maybe, good yeah. in that, in that uh, may, aspect. maybe maybe like the whole you owe me so you will have to work for me yeah also is, that is a bit you know like securing your position mm -hmm. but in any case he could he could have chosen to employ anybody like that but he basically searches for war veterans mm -hmm. that were kind of discarded by the, government. by the government after their service and they live uh, in poverty and they have issues and nobody cares about it so maybe that is uh, some there maybe is some reflection on what was actually happening yes. or is happening in America at that point so that yeah. does uh, still, is. still is that is a very big portion of the book yeah. really uh, let's talk about our bad guy. Mm. So Adam. Adam Pierce is our bad guy. He is such a psychotic bad guy. He's a good bad guy, I have to say. He's very cocky. Like yeah. He's very sure of himself and he's he's just sort of intent uh, on destroying things, even though there is a larger purpose to his chaos. So there's a larger plan that's you know involved, but he really just wants to blow shit up and he wants to, the world to burn because He's a spoiled little shit that doesn't really, you know, care yes. about anything or anyone. And, and his family doesn't basically help in the sense that they they did this. They made him like they, that. They, they, basically, they made him like that. Then they kind of disowned him. Well, no, he actually ran away. Yes. And did a lot of bad things. So they kind of disowned him. No, no, we don't want to, you know, like be linked to this person. But in the end, his mom finances him. Yes. And I found it very, like, not humorous, just I laughed uh, when there was this portion where, again, this is a reflection of primes. Uh, when I think Nevada or somebody had to explain to his mom that giving $10,000 isn't petty change. Yeah, yeah. It's like Nevada's, I don't know, three, four months worth of work and this person is giving her son $10,000 a month, you know, because... A month, a week. Or a week or a something. Week, week. Like, because he is her son. Oh, and I can understand, like, this, like, the mother love, mm -hmm. but again, your son is you literally... You can totally see how they're disconnected from the yes. real world. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah. And that that is one of the questions, uh, like... Uh, would people, if they had this much power, mm -hmm. would they actually act like that? It's a good question. Like, I think, yeah. I think they would. Yeah. I think they would. I think power is the same as money. So, people with... It's a high. Yeah, people with a lot of money, they get accustomed to a certain way of living. So, I guess people with 
magical powers to get accustomed to a sort of yeah. way of living and it, yeah. it sort of creates a chasm between you and people who don't have the same amount as you and so on yes. uh, so uh, another thing that I love about this book is Nevada's family none yeah. of them are annoying which is which <laughs> was a godsend usually like the sister is annoying or the mom is like you know here we have uh, a family uh, that is supportive that works together that yeah. you know they love each other they tease each other I mean they're they're awesome together and it, it totally gets expanded on in the later books yes. but in this one we we got to meet the awesome grandma who works mm -hmm. as a, she she yeah. builds machines and cars and hovering tanks and stuff and she's she's very awesome uh, Nevada's mother is also a war veteran and yeah. um, you know, she spends most of the books in a, in a spider ne a spider nest, sniper nest, like trying yeah. to decide whether to shoot Rogan or not. And yeah. you know, her sisters and her cousins are, I mean, they're you know t typical teenagers, teenagers, but they understand that you know they have to help Nevada if she asks them to help, if she asks them for help. Yeah. And you know, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're an awesome family. Yeah, they're, I think uh, since there's so many women there, mm -hmm. there's also like this. I found it interesting that most of them actually have jobs that are typically male yeah. in society. So, you know, like Nevada is a PI, her ma grandma is a mechanic, mechanic of yes. sorts, her mom is a sniper. Mm -hmm. Okay, which does have to do with her power, mm -hmm. but still, those are, you know, like things that you can't, don't usually associate with women, mm -hmm. and they're all very prominent in their fields and yes. their they their services are asked for they mm -hmm. don't even need to offer them people yeah. come to them because they know they're this good so I think I one think... of my one of my favorite scenes was when Rogan was at their their warehouse and when the youngest brother came in and he's like you're Matt Rogan really you look like that like can you like play guitar or, or sing? Well, I can sing a little. Like, no, it's not fair. You're powerful and you look like this. Oh, I have no chance. And I really, it's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is that's the brother. All the women are like very skeptical about him and they're like, I'm going to shoot you right now if you don't behave. Yeah. 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 The family is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the magic system a little bit. So yep. Nevada's power is that she can tell whether people are lying or not. Yeah. Uh, then uh, who do we have? So her mom uh, has like, like a sharpshooting thing that's happening. Yeah. Her grandma has an affinity towards machines. Yeah. Then you have the sisters that have some of her powers, but we get we get to discuss that the discover that in the later books. Okay. You know, so there are various levels of this magical system and the world is very well uh, set up and, and described, yeah. I have to say. Uh, there weren't really a lot of like um, mysteries or misunderstandings. I think it, uh, it, the book uh, was an awesome introduction into the world, mm -hmm. so it didn't overwhelm you with the information of like everything in the magical world. Yeah, it's just but what was important uh, for what was, Nevada and her yes. case right now. Yes, but you still got enough to understand what's happening, mm -hmm. uh, like how it's happening, mm -hmm. why is this happening, and uh, and for me, I mean, she read the book, so she knows, but for me, I really want to read on, not only to see what Nevada and Rogan do, but what happens in the world, what is there, what kind of magic there is more, like mm -hmm. what... What are the other magic users? What I mean, it's just I found it very intriguing to see what to see what will happen yes. next. Okay. And yes. Some what did we? Bad sides. Bad sides. So, well, uh, well, this kind of the whole uh, superficial treatment of violence, as yes. we said, and like uh, the uh, overwhelming presence of guns and it's America. Okay. What can you yes. Do? Uh, also, uh, and there was like a, maybe a plot uh, hole. Right. Oh, oh right. How, how, how Adam? We didn't really. There were like this. Well, through the entirety of book, Adam is destroying parts of Houston to get uh, pieces of a uh, enchanted something, something jewel yeah. or something, and so he found two. And the third one was being hidden at the district attorney's office. office, and then somehow who is also we forgot to mention that like, who is also like a badass female, and yes. Nevada basically has a 
crush a girl crush on girl her. crush on her. She's just like this a badass woman that sticks to the law and everybody like is afraid of the, her. Like literally, even the families, the magic families, are afraid of her. Yeah, because they know if they do something, something wrong, wrong she she's go. she's gonna get them. She's gonna get them. Yes, and it's kind of. It wasn't revealed, we don't know how the how heck he got the he got third, the third part. part. Yeah. The that part. was weird, so Well it's it's I think it's part of the you know uh, the, the light conspiracy. Okay. Okay, so yeah. okay. So what it else was it? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it I'll do this one do because this one, uh, so like basically I was in a slump and I loved the whole uh, sexual parts. Okay. There were not plenty of them, it just but they no. were very well written out. Yes. And but there was a lot of mentioning of how Rogan is um muscles full of muscles and oh, how dragon like what, like what, tiger it, what 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 was it? Wait, wait, wait. Uh so uh, his powerful masculine body and irresist irresistible aura. Yes. Like now, there's a thing later because we find out that uh if you have a, a, a primary power, you have a sort of a secondary passive oh, power. Right. So one of the pow uh, powers that uh, Rogan has, that he can sort of read minds. So in the second book, he's like, no, why do you... no, no. He's <laughs> in the second book. He's like, why do you keep thinking about dragons around me and tigers and stuff? So that was hilarious. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, okay. All right. So <laughs> yeah, there's lots of mention of him as a dragon and, and tiger okay. and being all like elegant and, and powerful and yeah. Like, you know, I don't imagine him at all. Like, <laughs> like this is not how I imagined either of them. And I saw the cover before I read the book, but no. <laughs> yeah. So maybe there's a lot of those references. <laughs> but overall, we love this. Book. We all love the book. It's fun. It's entertaining. It has a good story. It has great characters. Yeah. The romancey parts are not like overwhelming. The... Yeah. It's awesome. So we would definitely recommend De it to everybody. Definitely. You get it four stars, right? Yes, I get it four stars. I get it five stars. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it. Uh, if you read this book, please do talk to us down in the comments. If you agree with the stuff we said or if you don't agree, we are here for a discussion. Uh, like, share <laughs> and subscribe. And thank you for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye! Bye.